voted one of the most beautiful places on Earth, Mauritius is an island nation in the Indian Ocean. On the southwestern tip of the island, you will find a fascinating illusion. When viewed from above, a runoff of sand and silt deposits creates the impression of an underwater waterfall. But did you know that there are actually real underwater waterfalls? Seven waterfalls have been discovered deep underwater. The tallest waterfall on Earth is not Angel Falls, but an underwater waterfall called Denmark Strait Cataract located in the Atlantic Ocean between Greenland and Iceland. It is the world's highest underwater waterfall, with water falling almost 11,500 feet, and it carries 175 million cubic feet of water per second. It is caused due to temperature differences in the water on on either side of the strait. Cold water is denser than warm water, and the eastern side of the strait is a lot colder than the western side. So when the waters meet, the cold water sinks below the warmer water, creating a strong downward flow, which is considered a waterfall. And it's not just waterfalls that are under the ocean. There are huge secret rivers complete with rapids and islands that flow down the sea shelves out into the desert plains, creating riverbanks and floodplains. Here's a picture of the river Cenote Angelita under the sea of Mexico. These salty rivers carry sediments and minerals and could be vital in sustaining life. The world's sixth largest river by volume is below the Black Sea. It is 350 times larger than the Thames and 150 feet deep in some places. Number 8. The Milky Sea Phenomenon for over 400 years, sailors told tales of a mysterious event that takes place far out in the Indian Ocean. They would come across miles and miles of milky, glowing waters, sometimes stretching as far as the eye could see. In 2005, a group of scientists led by Dr. Stephen Miller of the Naval Research Laboratory in Monterey, California, decided to take a closer look at the story to see if it was true. They managed to register about 235 observations and get a satellite image that showed an area of low lighting in the Indian Ocean about the size of Connecticut. Their samples that they collected indicated the presence of a type of bioluminescent bacteria in the water known as Vibrio harvey, just in case someone asks you. This isn't the same kind of bacteria that you might see in waves that use their bright light to ward off predators. This bioluminescent bacteria may actually use light to attract fish since its favorite place to live is inside a fish's gut. Scientists guess is that since they only emit a very faint light on their own, they have to gather together to make an impact. Their collective glow can grow to massive milky sea proportions when their numbers swell to a huge amount. Think 40 billion trillion. They may also congregate to colonize algae. Sounds like a party. It is still only a guess since Dr. Miller and his colleagues haven't determined exactly what causes the bacteria to gather. Number 7. Unexplained Sounds Of course, dark, creepy fog can make you jump at anything that goes bump in the night. But what about things that go bloop in the sea? With names like the bloop, train, and Julia, the sounds have been captured by hydrophones or underwater microphones monitored by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the NOAA. The decidedly non-spooky nicknames for these sounds do little to dispel the mystery surrounding them. In 1997, NOAA hydrophones 3,000 miles apart picked up one of the loudest sounds ever recorded off the southern coast of South America, the bloop, which sounds exactly like its name, a bloop. The bloop mimics marine animal sounds in some ways, but if it were some kind of sea creature, it would have to be almost the size of the Eiffel Tower for that sound to be heard from 3,000 miles away. So what made the sound? It's anyone's guess, but deep sea monsters aside, the NOAA holds the most likely explanation for the bloop is that it was the sound of a large iceberg fracturing. Sure. Another weird noise known as Julia sounds almost like someone whining or maybe even singing underwater. Water. The Eastern Equatorial Pacific Autonomous Array, the fancy name for the network of hydrophones, picked up this strange sound that lasted 15 seconds in 1999. Like the bloop, NOAA researchers suspect the hydrophones picked up the sound of a large Antarctic iceberg running into the sea floor. And my personal favorite, the train. Train sounds like you might expect it to sound. Recorded in 1997, Train is a steady hum that likely originated in Antarctica's Ross Sea. The suspected culprit? An iceberg dragging its keel along the ocean floor. Who knew that ice was so noisy? Number 6. Brinicle. The underwater icicle of death. 
a brinicle, or a brine icicle, forms beneath the sea and kills everything in its path. It forms beneath sea ice when a flow of extremely cold saline water is introduced to an area of ocean water, creating an ice stalactite. Concentrated salt water escapes from within the frozen ice formed above the ocean's surface and seeps into the depths of the water. Once the concentrated salt goes under the surface of the water, it freezes extremely quickly. Brinicles occur in the frigid ocean waters around the poles. On reaching the seafloor, it will continue to accumulate ice as the surrounding water freezes. The brine will travel along the seafloor in a downslope direction until it reaches the lowest possible point where it will pool. Any bottom-dwelling sea creatures, such as starfish or sea urchins, can be caught in this expanding web of ice and be trapped, ultimately freezing to death. Number 5. Red Tide Red tide is a common name for what is known as algal bloom by scientists. Red tides actually have nothing to do with the tidal movement of water. These algae, known as phytoplankton, are plant-like organisms that can form dense, visible patches near the water's surface. Some red tides are associated with the production of natural toxins, depletion of oxygen or other effects, and are generally harmful. The ocean phenomenon occurs when there is a rapid growth or blooming of algae in the oceanic waters. The presence of red tide is highly dangerous as these algae can be fatal to birds, animals, and even humans. Manatees are killed by red tides every year. Humans can become seriously ill from eating oysters and other shellfish contaminated with red tide toxin. These shellfish have higher concentrations of saxitoxin, which blocks sodium channels and eating contaminated seafood can result in paralysis within 30 minutes. These algal blooms can potentially cause eye and respiratory irritation, coughing, sneezing, watery eyes, and itching. Red tide occur naturally off coasts all over the world and its cause is unknown. Not all red tides have toxins or are harmful, but be careful. Number 4. Pyrosome Otherwise known as the 60-foot-long jet-powered animal you've never even heard of. Pyrosomes are free-floating colonies that live usually in the upper layers of the ocean in warm seas. Pyrosomes are cone or cylinder-shaped colonies made up of hundreds to thousands of zooids. The individual zooids are smaller than a jelly bean. They reproduce by making exact copies of themselves and weave their tissues together to form a long tube, thereby adding to the colony, making it longer and longer. All of the pyrosome members are physically connected, actually sharing the tissues. They can grow to the size of a whale, though most are much smaller. Never try to swim inside one, though. Divers have found dead fish and penguins inside a pyrosome. They probably swam inside, got stuck, and drowned. But they aren't that scary since they only eat plankton. As if they weren't weird enough, they are brightly bioluminescent, flashing a pale blue-green or pink light that can be seen from far away. Number 3. Whirlpools a tiny whirlpool going down your drain is innocent enough, but the powerful whirlpools in nature are magnificent and destructive. Whirlpools are caused by a turbulent flow of water. When moving river water is forced to twist around an object or to stream into a narrower riverbed, the water flows faster and is more likely to create an energetic swirling turbulence. In the ocean, depending upon the geology of the seabed, driving currents can collide and create conflicting tidal flows. Water spins counterclockwise north of the equator and clockwise south of the equator. The destructive interaction forms a whirlpool. A whirlpool of extraordinary size or violence is a maelstrom. The swirling vortex is deadly. As we believe a black hole in space would suck us in if we ventured too close, so did ancient seafarers believe a giant whirlpool, a spinning vortex of death, would suck down ships and sailors never to be seen again. One of the most dangerous is the maelstrom of Saltstraumen, located near the Lofoten Islands off the coast of Norway, which creates the strongest tidal currents on the globe. Every six hours, vigorous ocean currents can flow up to 25 miles per hour as more than 105,668 gallons of water surge through the narrow strait. Number 2. Rogue Waves Severe weather has sunk more than 200 supertankers and container ships exceeding 200 meters in length during the last two decades. 
Rogue waves are believed to be the major cause in many such cases. Rogue, freak, or killer waves have been part of marine folklore for centuries, but have only been accepted as a real phenomenon by scientists over the past few decades. Rogue waves are large and spontaneous surface waves that can be extremely dangerous, even to huge ships like ocean liners. They are rare, unpredictable, may appear suddenly or without warning, and can impact with tremendous force. Since these waves are uncommon, measurements and analysis of this phenomenon is extremely rare. Exactly how and when rogue waves form is still under investigation. Number 1. Deep Water Photosynthesis A team of researchers has found evidence of photosynthesis taking place deep within the Pacific Ocean. Sunlight can penetrate 100 meters to 200 meters into the ocean, slowly dimming as the depth increases. Because these organisms live nearly 2,400 meters below the surface, almost 1.5 miles down, the team believes that they must be getting light from the hydrothermal vent near where they were found. There may be no sunlight at the bottom of the ocean, but some bacteria near hydrothermal vents use the vent dim red glow to photosynthesize and produce food for themselves. The discovery of the green sulfur bacteria living near hydrothermal vents off the coast of Mexico has significant implications for the resiliency of life on Earth and possibly on other planets. Scientists are still trying to figure out how it's all possible.